AEW, the wrestling show on Wednesday night. It's not everyone's cup of tea. And you know what? That's all right. Why did I just break out into random rhyme? I have absolutely no idea. But anyways, this week's AEW Dynamite, the go-home show for full gear. I liked last week's show a little bit more overall. That said, this show certainly had some highlights to it, and if nothing else, did something to try and close the loop and really build up to Saturday's pay-per-view. It could have done things better. There were, there were elements of this that I thought could have been more properly executed, but, you know, it's a whole different cadence now trying to maintain and build off of weekly television to build towards your big shows. You can't just sit there and pull in a bunch of people and just randomly throw stuff together. Now it has to have meaning. It has to have purpose. You have to do some storytelling leading up to it. So the whole environment is different. So I'm trying to exercise a little patience here, which is better than what I could say Pac should have shown in that opening match against Trent. Now, granted... I was kind of wondering on Twitter, what's the purpose of this match? Why are we having it? Somebody pointed out that it's to make Pac look strong and set up for his match against Hangman Page at full gear. Okay, I, I kind of get that. I, it just, I don't know if you should be kicking off your show with random matches that really don't have any buildup to them. And please do not give me that. Go to YouTube and see something crap. Please don't. Please don't. Um, but the whole thing that ruined this match for me was the botch at the end. What in the Sam's Blue hell was that? And it's not even just the botch. It's not even just the fact that the referee stopped counting even though Trent never got his shoulder up. It's the simple fact of, why in the hell would you even entertain after Neville hits that big spectacular finishing move off of the top rope, kicking out of that? Like, who calls for that? Who thought that that would be a good idea? And if nobody called for that, then what the hell was the ref thinking? It just, those are just really sloppy, dumb, bad mistakes. So Pac wins, but the finish goes over like a fart in church. Not his fault, just how it happened. And then he cuts a little promo talking about what he's going to do to Hangman Page on Saturday night. And you know what? That's cool. It's going to be Cowboy Shit versus The Bastard. And, and I'm here for it. That's cool. Then they follow this up with Cody's big career announcement. And I feel like no matter what I do, I don't win here. Because if I just praise this to kingdom frickin' come, then I just become like so many of the other sheeple that you see talk about AEW. And it looks like I'm trying to suck up to Cody Rhodes or kiss his ass or trying to whatever. Or if I sit there and blast any part of it or most parts of it, then I'm just a hater and I'm still holding a grudge a year and a half plus later. To which I would say I hold such a grudge that I watch the show every week that he is the executive vice president of. There are many things that I am in this world. Even if you say I hold a grudge, I can put personal shit aside for a greater purpose. Cody Rhodes is a fuckstick, a liar, so F him. Nonetheless, this big announcement, just kind of this randomly thrown out there stipulation that if he doesn't beat Chris Jericho at full gear on Saturday night, He'll never challenge for the AEW World Championship ever again. In which, I don't think anybody in their right mind believes that that stipulation would actually ever follow through or actually ever matter, actually ever happen for any length of time. So it just feels like you're randomly throwing shit onto this match, like having the three-person panel of judges in case the match goes the whole 60 minutes. Please, oh God, don't let that match go 60 minutes to where we even get to the judges' scorecards. And we're just throwing random stuff up against the wall that we don't really need to. Have the story be about the elite versus the inner circle. You don't need to do much more than that. Throwing all this other shit in there is just unnecessary and uncalled for. 
It's not needed. It just kind of smacks of kind of sloppy stupidity, if I'm being honest. Because while Cody's promo was good, and it was good, stop pumping it full of gas like it was some great spectacular thing. I admit that the crowd was really engaged. I liked how he worked the crowd. I liked the energy level and the passion that he had. When he actually looked at the content of some of what he said, it didn't make any fucking sense. Like he's trying to sell the story about Bill Watson, Eddie Graham, and his daddy, the American Dream, Dusty Rose, and how they were all big stars, but they were also management. He didn't really tie the story together well. And as a result, he just kind of randomly dropped that, you know, hey, if I don't win, I'm never going to get a shot at the title again. Which, you know, if that actually did happen, then you would question it from a business standpoint. That's just really dumb. So you know it's not going to happen. And the way it's worded probably means that somebody's going to interfere and cost Cody the title shot, even though he might win. You know, it might be a great time to sit there and have MJF do something, but do it in a he's trying to help Cody type of way, you know, trying to tie into the stipulation and making sure that he doesn't lose his shot forever and ever. So you start that build up there. That could maybe work. But again, just a stipulation that you're throwing out there that just didn't really feel like it was necessary. And this whole line about talking about how Chris Jericho had the same silver spoon that in his mouth that Cody Rhodes did, that makes no fucking sense. Chris Jericho's dad, Ted Irvine, was a journeyman hockey player for, I think, the Rangers for a number of years in the 60s and 70s when athletes weren't nearly paid as much as they are now. Chris Jericho had to strike it out on his own to go into a different business, travel the world for years to get to the point where he could become AEW's youngest ever world champion at the glorious age of Le Champion 48. Whereas Cody Rhodes, excuse me now, Cody, do you get what I'm saying, has been able to literally follow in his dad and his half-brother's footsteps. Like, when I heard that line, I'm like, that makes no effing sense at all. I see people talking about some of the greatest promos they've ever seen. I mean, you've been watching wrestling for two and a half years? It was a good promo for Cody. It was a good promo to build up some energy for that world title match. But there are elements of it and what he said, the content of what he said, that made absolutely no effing sense. And you're not going to change my mind on that because you know I'm right. Anyways, moving on. You had Private Party versus the Dark Order, SCU on commentary. Winner of the match gets thrown into the tag title match at full gear. Okay, at least this match has some purpose. Uh, please keep Kazarian off of commentary whenever possible because he's just bad, especially if he doesn't have Christopher Daniels to play off of here. A Private Party wins, thank the heavens, and they'll be in that title match. I guess the Lucha Brothers and SCU at full gear. But, but none of this matters. None of this matters because something truly great, epic, and magnificent happened on Wednesday night. This parody video package from Chris Jericho, Le Champion, that lasted all like three minutes and two seconds, is one of the single best pieces of wrestling vignette, promo, whatever the hell you want to call it, video package that I have seen in years. This thing was great. This thing was magnificent. Seeing Chris's aunt's friend from church, phenomenal. And then of all things, of all things, you got Sammy Guevara talking about how he's the youngest world champion in AEW history, Chris Jericho is. And he is the face of the company because he's the champion. And he's the champion because he's the face of the company. It's like, it was beautiful. Jake Hager saying nothing. It's like, that's the best promo work he's ever freaking done. But that, none of that matters. None of that matters. You want to talk about Wednesday Night Wrestling Wars? NXT had what? Who gives a crap? AEW had freaking Soul Train Jones. Living legend. They had freaking Virgil! Virgil! Comparing Chris Jericho's talents to Olive Garden breadsticks. They're unlimited. For God's sakes, he's not a farmer. They don't know what goat means, but he knows what Chris Jericho is. 
the greatest of all time. Like, this was unexpected bliss, unexpected magnificence. This is wrestling comedy done right. This is exactly why the hell you made Chris Jericho your first ever world champion to begin with, and you must insist upon him maintaining and staying as AEW champion after full gear and beyond. Because you can't do this stuff with anybody else. He has to stay champion. God, that video package was epic. Like anything else that happened after that was just icing on the cake. I don't even remember what happened in the women's tag match. Who gives a crap? These women just aren't stars. And I haven't been given a reason to care about any of them. And neither have any of you. And doesn't even get into that cringe-ass worthy Brandy Rose. Video package. I understand the whole thing of trying to introduce Cobb, but I'm sorry. If you're going to cut a promo talking about bitching about people <laughs> saying you're only getting your spot because of Cody and that you're a pretty face, then what you ought to do is not <laughs> have a minute and a half vignette where you validate everything that everybody's freaking saying <laughs> because your delivery is awful and your acting skills are totally and completely non-existent. Your charisma never had it. <laughs> like these, these Brandy Witch video vignettes are so bad that they're becoming interesting and compelling in their own sick and sadistic type of way. Oh, man. Just cringeworthy bad. Kind of like wasting Sean Spears on a match against Botch and Brandon Cutler. Oh, God. At least Sean Spears won. But after that, you're throwing out their doughboy Joey Janela? Like, what the hell is so special about Joey Janela? This is another fucking ham and egger. God. It's annoying. Can we have some damn standards with some of our wrestlers' plays? Oh my god, he does extreme stuff, Jeff. Oh my god, Slim Daddy, he can do all types of moves, don't you know? Who gives a crap if it's you? So can everybody else in your damn business now! Christ almighty. So now Sean Spears is going to waste himself against Joey Janela at the freaking pay-per-view. Ugh, poor guy. It didn't matter, though. You got to the main event tag match. And you hardly even remember what happened in the tag match because of all the chaos and ruckus that happened afterwards. It's Inner Circle, it's the Elite, it's MJF, it's all of them. There's all types of chaos and anarchy. You got Moxley walking down to the fucking ring with a barbed wire baseball bat, and then Moxley's got his own barbed wire baseball bat. They did all of this stuff, tied in so many different matches at the end. You maybe would have liked to have seen this spread out a little bit throughout the course of the show. This company still got to learn a little bit about pacing and spreading things out and evening out the presentation, I'll grant you. But damn it! At least you could say you have some type of cliffhanger hook to your go-home show before the pay-per-view. When you watch other companies so often, you don't get that anymore. And here, at least, you got it. So while I liked last week's show quite a bit more overall, this week's show still had some notable things happen, and it did something to get me excited for the pay-per-view on Saturday night. It doesn't always have to be perfect. Just once in a while, be good enough. That's not too much to ask. And anytime, anytime, you feature... Freaking Chris Jericho's aunt's friend from church. And freaking Virgil! In a video package, you know you won the night. Even if NXT creeped up on you a little bit in the ratings, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. For this night, you won. You won! You're at Virgil! Game over.